Good afternoon. The first item of business this afternoon is a debate on motion 8649 in the name of Tom Arthur on the Power of Inchaffrey Drainage Commission Scotland Bill. I would ask all those members who wish to speak in the debate to press their request to speak buttons now. And I call on Tom Arthur to speak to and move the motion on behalf of the Power of Inchaffrey Drainage Commission Scotland Bill. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I am pleased to open the preliminary stage debate on the Power of Inchaffrey Drainage Commission Scotland Bill. You could be forgiving for thinking that this may be a dry and technical subject, but I can assure you that the POW is literally anything but dry and has a rich history which involves no less a figure than King Robert the Bruce. Before I dive into the POW in detail, I would like to thank all those who engaged with us and also the other committee members, Alison Harris and Mary Fee for their hard work. I also wish to put on the record the committee's thanks to the clerks and Spice for their invaluable support. This is a private bill which was introduced on 17th March 2017. A private bill is introduced by an outside promoter and makes specific changes to the law affecting the, prom the promoter rather than changing the public and general law. This bill is promoted by the POW of Inchaffrey, uh, Chaffrey Commission, which has responsibility for the arrangements, management, maintenance and improvement of the POW. For anyone wondering what a POW is, I will explain shortly. Anyone who considers that a private bill would adversely affect their interests can formally object to the bill, and three admissible object objections were lodged. None were rejected at preliminary stage, so all will, be, all will be considered in detail should the bill progress to consideration stage. The objections helped inform our scrutiny, which saw the committee take evidence from the promoters on two occasions. We questioned them not only on comments and concerns raised in the objections, but also in a wide range of written submissions, including from the Scottish Government, Scottish Natural Heritage, and the Scottish Environment Protection Agency. Before I set out some of the areas of concern, I will explain what the POW of Inchaffrey actually is. POW is a Scots word meaning a ditch or slow running stream or channel of water. The POW of Inchaffrey provides drainage to approximately 1,930 acres of surrounding land near Creef in Perth and Conross and is equivalent of 13.7 miles long. The land it drains is defined as benefited land in the bill, and those who own land or property there are called heritors, and must pay the commission a share of its annual budget for the upkeep of the POW. The origins of the POW date back to the 13th century, and further work was carried out in 1314 at the behest of King Robert the Bruce. It was first put on a statutory footing in 1696 in the Old Scots Parliament, and that act was updated in 1846 at Westminster, giving the commissioners greater power to carry out works and improvements and making provision for the costs of works to be shared amongst landowners. The commission now wants to replace the 1846 act with something fit for purpose so it can carry out its responsibilities more effectively in the future and ensure that there is a fair and proportionate system for calculating the annual assessments heritors must pay. Historically, the POW has been managed by the owners of the agricultural land surrounding it. It was never envisaged that the benefited land would include a large number of residential properties. But due to centuries of drainage work, some land was made suitable for development and a new housing estate was built in the Balgowan area. Some older properties were also redeveloped for residential use. Most of those residents are already liable to pay the commission for the upkeep of the POW and the remainder will be made liable by the bill. The issue of which land benefits, who should pay, how much they should pay, and the balance of power between the commission and the heritors are at the heart of many of the concerns expressed to us on the committee. Much revolves around the commission's annual budget, as that determines what individual heritors will pay. The committee therefore spent some time clarifying what the historic budget of the commission had been and what factors could impact future budgets. On request, the promoters provided the committee details of the budget between 2004 and 2016. The budget has varied from under £3,000 to over £30,000 in that period, with an average annual budget of £14,609. My colleague Mary Fee will talk more about the future budgets of the Commission, and Alison Harris will set out views on the need for a right of appeal and how prospective purchasers are made aware of the POW. However, I will highlight a couple of other issues before I close. The committee is satisfied that maintenance of the POW is required and that a body is needed to manage that. 
It is clear that Perth and Kinross Council, SEPA and Scottish Water either have no interest in taking that role or have no locus to do so. Therefore, the Commission needs to continue and it is appropriate that its work is funded by those who benefit. However, the balance of power between the Commission and Heritors needs careful consideration and I will briefly give some examples. There are currently six Commissioners, two each for the lower, middle and upper sections with no Commissioner for the Balgowan section of the POW. The Bill proposes changing this to allow a Balgowan area Commissioner and seven Commissioners in total. However, we noted that as approximately 73% of heritors live in the Balgowan section, it did not seem appropriate for them to be represented by one Commissioner out of seven. As a result of our questioning, the promoters have agreed in principle to bring forward amendments to allow two Balgowan Commissioners leading to eight in total. The Commission also supported the, the Committee's preliminary suggestions to allow easier termination of a Commissioner's appointment and to make it possible for a majority of heritors to, to dismiss a Commissioner from their section. We also discussed whether the method set out in the Bill for calculating annual assessments was fair and proportionate, particularly in terms of heritors who may be asset rich but income poor and may live in modest houses on larger land plots for historic reasons. Should the bill proceed, we will discuss these and other issues with the objectors and promoters with a view to bringing forward amendments to the bill, if appropriate. Presiding officer, overall, we support the general principles of the bill. And while we have identified some issues that need to be resolved at consideration stage, we are confident that sensible compromises can be found. Presiding officer, I therefore am happy to move the motion in my name. Thank you very much. And I now call on the Minister, Paul Wheelhouse, to speak. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, I'm going to briefly speak on behalf of the Scottish Government. Uh, some bill, private bills are straightforward. As the preliminary stage report shows, this is not a straightforward bill. I congratulate the committee for its evident hard work in scrutinising the bill. And on the rights of appeal, the uh, committee's report says, and I quote here, the committee is concerned about the lack of a right of appeal in the bill, especially given the issues identified regarding the potential for the annual budget to increase substantially and, and unchecked, and the, that the 19, 1846 Act contains an appeals process for assessments to be appealed to the sheriff. If the bill is to stand the test of time, then it seems prudent for it to contain proportionate appeals and dispute resolution procedures for, for those it affects. The committee also does not believe uh, judicial review, which is a potentially expensive form of court action that has, heard, has to be heard in the court of session in Edinburgh, will be a realistic option for most heritors, unquote. It goes on to say, and I quote again, should the bill proceed to consideration stage, the committee will discuss the issue with the promoters and objectors. It's the committee's preliminary view that the bill may need to be amended to ensure appropriate and proportionate appeal and dispute resolution mechanisms are put in place, um, unquote. The Scottish Government agrees with the Committee's view that the Bill may need to be amended to ensure appropriate and proportionate appeal and dispute resolution mechanisms are put in place. And the Scottish Government is happy to work further with the Committee as required to ensure appropriate amendments come forward to put this into effect. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I now call on Mary Fee. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I begin by thanking the convener, um, Tom Arthur, for moving the motion? And as we heard from Tom Arthur, how the annual budget will be determined each year is key to our considerations because that's how each editor's individual charge will be calculated. And the committee identified three factors that could have a significant impact on future budgets. The first is the fact that the cleaning and repair of the POW has been put on hold to focus on the bill. The second is that the costs of the private bill itself, and finally the fact that there are now beavers in the POW, which may cause damage and so need to be managed, and I'll speak a little bit more about each of those factors. The promoters have confirmed that no work to clean or repair the POW has been undertaken since 2014, as funds have been instead set aside for the preparation and promotion of this bill. And the committee have asked what implications there are for the POW due to lack of maintenance of, or repairs over the past two years. And the committee have heard that there would be a backlog and there was already evidence of work being required in certain parts of the POW, which if left unattended, could increase the risk of flooding. And this maintenance work would be a priority once the bill has passed. The implications of this for heritors is another cost which will need to be recouped from them by the commission. 
and the bill states that any promotion costs of the bill mm. not recovered under the 1846 mm. Act will be added to future annual budgets and therefore will be paid for by all heritors. And the bill states that these costs can be spread out over the next three years. So that's another potentially substantial increase to the budget in those years. Then there is the, the issue of the beavers. The committee heard that beavers had been illegally released into the area some 10 years ago and have caused significant problems. And as the convener mentioned in his opening speech, the committee members undertook a fact-finding visit to the POW on the 8th of September. And on this visit, I saw for myself some of the damage which beavers have caused to sections along the POW. The Commission is now faced with having to manage the beavers in order to minimise or prevent further damage. And we heard that the Commission was in discussions with Scottish National Heritage about a trial beaver exclusion area. The Commissioners contacted a contractor who proposed a design for a barrier. However, the cost was around £42,000 and the Commission was looking to the Scottish National Heritage to fund the barriers in full. The committee have recently heard that for reasons of cost and of complexity, Scottish Natural, Natural Heritage will not be pursuing the proposed trial at this stage, which leaves the, co the commissioners with the issue of how best to manage the beavers in the POW. Whatever steps the Commission takes to manage the beaver population in the POW, it is likely that there will be a resulting cost, which will be added to the annual budget, perhaps over a number of years. And it's the heritors, including the commissioners, of course, who will have to pay for this in their annual contributions. The committee notes that all of these factors, the cost of promoting the bill, the backlog of cleaning and repair, and the potential costs of beaver protection could increase the annual budgets and therefore the heritors' contributions considerably. That's why we concluded that in order to future-proof the bill, added safeguards are required to protect heritors from excessive budget increases. Safeguards such as appropriate and proportionate appeal and dispute resolution mechanisms. And should the bill pass the consideration stage, we will make sure that these issues are discussed further with the promoters and with the objectors. And one of the other issues we examined was the non-payment of assessments by some heritors. And we sought clarification on this and it was confirmed that there are unpaid contributions amounting to debts of £21,480 dating back to 2012. And after considering the issue, the promoters confirmed that whilst the bill gave them the option of pursuing the debts, at a meeting of the Commission on the 15th of August, it was decided that historic debts will be written off and not pursued. And one reason that was given for this decision was that the potential costs of pursuing outstanding debts could be more than the amount owed. However, the promoters also confirmed that any future debts will, will be pursued by the Commission through the courts. It does seem, therefore, that all the heritors under the bill, including the 20 new heritors, could face higher charges than would otherwise be the case as a result of some previous heritors not paying and that debt now being written off. And it's also clear that any heritors not paying from now on could face court action. Objections and written submissions have claimed that this is not fair and that should the bill proceed, we will pursue this further at consideration stage. And finally, presiding officer, in, in closing, the committee will continue to closely monitor these areas of concern at consideration stage to ensure fairness to the heritors going forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. And no one else has asked to speak in the debate. I therefore call Alison Harris to close. I also would like to thank the convener, Tom Arthur and Mary Fee for their contributions. Presiding officer, currently there is nothing in the bill to prevent the Commission's budget and therefore heritors' charges rising substantially. There is a right for heritors to make representations to a surveyor if changes are proposed to the values used to calculate annual assessments or to the land categories. However, this is not the same as a right of appeal. Under the 1846 Act, heritors have the right to appeal to the Commission and then to the court if they are not satisfied with their assessments. 
However, this right has not been carried forward in the bill, nor does it contain any right of appeal for heritors to challenge the budget. The issue was raised in objections and written submissions, including by the Scottish Government, which stated that it would seem preferable to replicate existing appeal rights in the new bill. The promoters told the committee that a right of appeal was not included because the values which underpin the calculation of the annual assessments are set out in the bill. The only variable factor is the budget. There is less scope for challenge to this bill compared to the 1846 Act. The bill provides for a cost-effective proportionate system for all and the costs of appeals would have to be shared out amongst the heritors. And finally, because a judicial review remains an option of last resort. However, the committee remained concerned about the lack of a right of appeal for heritors and asked the promoters to reflect further. The promoters suggested amending the bill to ensure that when heritors are given 21 days to make representations to the commissioners about the proposed budget, the commissioners would have to take any comments into account when finalising the budget. Pushed further by the committee, the promoters then made a further suggestion of providing a right of appeal to an independent expert, but only in circumstances where 10 or more heritors wish to appeal. The promoters stressed that this was not their preferred option and cautioned that such a process could delay the setting of the annual budget and lead to the budget being set at higher levels and being less accurate. They also cautioned that any appeals could result, whether successful or not, in higher rather than lower individual assessment for heritors, as legal costs of the appeal would themselves need to be shared out amongst all heritors. This issue clearly needs further thought and should the bill proceed to consideration stage, we will discuss it with the promoters and objectors. It is the committee's view at this stage that the bill may need to be amended to ensure that an appeal mechanism is put in place. Another issue which came to light during our scrutiny was that some prospective purchasers are not made aware of the POW and the obligations to make payments to the Commission. The Commission told us, in its view, there are already satisfactory methods in place for notifying prospective purchasers, including the Home Report, the Survey, the Standard Missives, the Property Inquiry Certificate and the recently launched Scotless, a new online land and property service launched by the Registers of Scotland. However, we still think more needs to be done, should the Bill be passed, to alert prospective purchasers, purchasers to, firstly, the POW's existence, Secondly, its purpose, and thirdly, the requirement to make annual payments to the Commission. We identified potential changes to the Bill which could help, such as requiring the land plans and new register of heritors to be published. The promoters were sympathetic to these suggestions, and should the Bill proceed to the next stage, we consider these issues further with the promoters and objectors, and bring forward amendments if necessary. In addition to this, more may need to be done out with the bill to help prospective purchasers. The promoters told the committee that companies that provide inquiry certificates are prepared to make specific reference to the POW in them. In our report, we asked the promoters to provide the committee with written confirmation of this. We also recommend that the promoters liaise with Perth and Kinross Council to ensure that any certificates they issue make reference to the POW. We also recommend that the promoters engage with the Registers of Scotland to explore how and when relevant information can be included in Scotless. The promoters told us that they intend to launch a website which could include an easy online mechanism for owners to notify the Commission of Land and Property Sales. Such a website should not just help with the issue, but improve communication all round. As the convener has said, presiding officer, the committee supports the general principles of the bill and after thorough preliminary scrutiny stage, uh, uh, stage scrutiny, we have a clear picture of the issues which need to be examined further with the objectors and the promoters at the consideration stage, should Parliament agree today that the bill should proceed to that stage. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that concludes the preliminary stage debate on the POW of Inchaffray Drainage Commission Scotland Bill. And we'll move on to the next item of business.